In today's clip, I will show you step by step how I produce this portrait using this reference image from Unsplash, which has links in the description below, and three coloured pencils and three different colours of watercolours to produce this portrait. I will take you through the processes I used in how to produce this portrait. So let's get on with the tutorial. Before we move on to adding the colour, I'm going to talk about your colour choices. Now, the reason I decided to make this clip is because we are in a lockdown period where it's very difficult to get resources. I wanted to think about how we could make a piece of work with limited resources. So the main way to make a portrait or the most important element of any drawing is the tone and how you get your light and dark areas. So I thought it would be interesting to make a portrait with limited resources. So <clears throat> I've selected three colours and one is a dark tone and that is violet blue. I'm using Prismacolor pencils and I'll put a link in the description below. One is a mid tone which is lilac and one is a light tone which is hot pink. That is the most important element with choosing your colours. However, you could also go one step further and group them together with warm colours. So you could have a red, orange and yellow. But I've gone for cold colours because that was the kind of look that I wanted to go for today. So <clears throat> what I'm doing in this stage now is I am layering up my colours and starting very, very lightly, layering them up, picking out the areas that are going to need some tonal values and starting to layer them up very lightly. The reason for that as with any sketch or any drawing, is if I start going in dark, regardless of whether there are dark areas, it's going to be difficult to take that away. So I'm starting to layer up my colours very lightly and then I can gradually go back later. Once you have added your initial colours in with your pencil colours, you can now move on to adding watercolour. So for this, I am using Windsor and Cosman half pans and the colours that I have selected that complement the colours I'm using with the colours in my pencils are Permanent Rose, Mauve and Prussian Blue. And if you look in the descriptions below, you'll find links to those paints. So what I'm doing initially is I'm mixing them and I am testing them out on a swatch at the side because I don't want them to be too dark. I want them to be just the right shade for the pencils that I'm using. And what I will do is I'll start layering them up lightly in blocks and then I will start adding darker shades later. Thank you. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm applying quite a lot of paint at the bottom because in a moment I will tip the painting up to achieve drips at the bottom of the painting because I want to create quite a loose effect. And now I'm applying a patch of paper on top of the shaded area because I'm going to apply loose splashes. I'm trying to create quite a loose effect on this painting and I want to protect the area that is detailed. So there's a contrast between the detailed and the loose effect. I'm now going to go over and add some more detail into the hair and I will add more areas of shading onto the face. Obviously I've done this once the paint splashes have dried because if not then I will end up damaging those paint splashes. I'm now going to go with my colour pencil and add some final finishing touches. Obviously I'm waiting for the paint to dry because I can now see there's some areas that are quite flat and obviously I want the face to look 3D. I then go in with more paint. Remember that when you're applying watercolour it always dries lighter so this is why I need to go in and add more areas just to pull the face up and make it look more 3D. So I'm now going to pick, go and pick out some small highlights with the gel pen just to make sure that there are these little highlight details picked out around the eyes. I find that I can use this quite often in watercolours where areas haven't been identified previously or sometimes with watercolours it's very difficult to leave those areas out so gel pen is very useful for picking these details out in the final finishing touches. this clip then make sure you check out more clips like this in the watercolour playlist. Don't forget to look in the description below for details of products used in today's clip and if you have any ideas for content or questions leave a comment below. If you would like to see more clips in the future don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future content. Mm -hmm.